Now, this game, I played freaking horribly in. I'm not trying to devalue my opponent's playing skill, as she played this well and played it right. But I, however, played this horribly. And the outcome of the game should have not been what it was or is, as you'll see in this video. But uh, how's it going guys? It's AJ Pay bringing you another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle. This one's against Friendly Skeleton and it's a UU match and I believe that's what her name is. Well that, I believe that's what it was in the ba Smog and Battle Finder, but um, yeah. I brought my useless Snorlax, which is always useless, you know, and I'll explain why he's useless in the video. And then I just do together random other pokes, cause they look pretty cool around each other. Especially Durant, cause Durant's kinda underrated, but yeah, let's just go ahead and begin the battle. So, I'm gonna lead off with Azumarill as he's gonna have a Crobat. Now, I don't think I let off with Wixie just cause I didn't want to get hit by a U-turn that could've possibly been Choice Bandit from this Crobat. But gonna go for Aqua Jet just cause I wanna get damage off on this before it could potentially kill me off with Brave Bird cause if it does go for Brave Bird, it's gonna take himself to the point where once I set up Rocks and he switches back in, he's gonna die. But luckily he goes for a U-turn and he's gonna switch into this very defensive Porygon 2 and my Azumarill is Expert Belted so I could've went for Super Power but I kinda wanna still have it bluffed if that makes any sense. But that was a stupid play of what, of bluffing it. And then also, it was a stupid play of me to switching into Shaman. I don't know why I switched into Shaman, but what I should have done here is switch into my special defensive offensive um, Snorlax Tau. As Tau gets frozen even though it has the immune fat ability which cuts ice and fire attacks in half. So this Snorlax of mine, this Tau of mine, has always been useless to me, always getting hacks, never getting a job done, and is completely useless to me in basically every battle. But in this battle, you'll see that Tao might actually do something. But this is going to be a perfect opportunity for me to thaw out as she is basically using me as setup fodder and just setting up spikes. And I finally thaw out, luckily, and I'm just going to fire punch because, you know, being frozen, sometimes you're frozen for like ever, sometimes you thaw out quickly. Luckily, I did. Gonna go, and that fire punch did not kill, which I thought it would, but you know, it doesn't. And then she, she's going to make the smart play here, and she's going to go for the pain split. Basically getting all, her health, all of her health back and making a dent on my Snorlax's health. As I'm going to go for the fire punch again, and that's not going to take it out. But yeah, but here is what I should have predicted. The switch into Blastoise was painfully obvious, and I for some reason was not paying attention and just went for a fire punch, and Blastoise is, you know, really defensive, 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 defensive. It's a water type, I hit him with a fire attack that's not stabbed, that's gonna do nothing, and Leftovers is basically gonna heal that up. So I basically wasted a turn because I'm playing pretty stupidly, but she's playing well. So, gonna switch into my Shaman now because this is gonna be the best opportunity for me to heal up some health by resting. But, she wears me out, so that was a waste of a turn for me again. But, she wears me out to my Durant, my Kevin Durant, you know. They're doing pretty good, they're tied 2 2, but. Um, anyways, getting off track. Gonna go for the Choice Bandit Thunder Fang, and that does more than I expected. I don't know why this, um, Durant is borderline and not Yu Yu, but. I think it's because of the hustle ability. Luckily, she doesn't scald, get the burn scald there, so gonna switch out now. Predicting Rotom Heat to come in, and I'm gonna go into my Snorlax again because this Snorlax basically walls that thing for days because I'm somewhat especially defensive and I do have the thick fat ability, so fire attacks won't really affect me that much. And here is where I learned Pursuit still hits the poke staying in when it uses full switch and U turn. Because I the reason why I went for Pursuit because I thought she would switch into um, Frostlass and the Pursuit would hit the swap, the switching in Pokemon. But it still hits the poke using the switching out move. So I did not know that. You learn something new every day, I guess. But she's going to switch to Crobat now. And right here, I predicted her to go for a U-turn and not Brave Bird. But what she's actually going to do is go for Taunt. Which um, doesn't really affect me because I don't have Rest. I have just four attacking moves. So basically this is a really offensive but kind of defensive bulky Snorlax as I go for the body slam, body slam and I do get the para hacks which is going to really help me against this Crobat because Crobat is probably the fastest poke in the UU tier without a scarf or anything of the sort. But yeah, just going to go for the body slam again because I know she probably doesn't want to switch into Frostlass because I am faster and there would be really no point in switching to Frostlass. 
and I'm just gonna body slam this Rotom Heat, which can't do anything to me. But now this Rotom Heat shows that it's the trick set, and she is gonna trick me the specs. So now my Snorlax is kind of really useless as I go for the pursuit because if she stayed in, you know, she'd die. If she switched out, I'd pursued her and kill her. So either way, she's dead. And here comes this Houndoom. Now this Houndoom, I did not know was a big threat. But I make a stupid play here going into a Azumarill, taking whatever hit this is gonna go for. And he goes for a, she goes for a Fire Blast. And she gets a crit, which doesn't really matter, because even if she did hit me Fire Blast, the next following turn she would have just killed me with her sucker punch anyways. So that's basically why that crit did not matter at all. As I hope she wouldn't go for a sucker punch, as I went for the Aqua Jet, and that's gonna take me out. What I should have done was sack something before switching to my Azumarill, so that was pretty stupid of me. But gonna go into my um, Durant hoping that I can live a Sucker Punch even though I'm at such low range. But I am naturally faster, but this thing is, this um, Houndoom is Life Orb, so that's gonna take me out despite being resisted. So, I'm in a bit of a hole! So, gonna go into my Choice Scarf Victini, hoping that she does not go for Sucker Punch and over predicts or something. And luckily she doesn't go for a Sucker Punch, as I believe a Sucker Punch would have killed me as I U-turn. But she's gonna get a Pursuit off on me, I'm just like, crap, Victini is basically dead. But luckily, I live with 9, but either way, she does have her Hazards up, so if my Victini switches in again, it's gonna die from Hazard. So basically, Victini is Death Fodder now. Gonna go into Shaman, as I thought I had Leech Seed, but I don't. So, Shaman might as well just stay in and die here, cause... This Houndoom is going to take itself out with its own life or recoil. So this threat is finally averted, but it left a big dent on my team as I have three pokes left, which is my Victini, my Choice Spec Snorlax, and my Uixie. And Snorlax and Uixie are both my walls, so I gotta like somewhat stall them out, or basically I gotta figure something out. As this switch into Blastoise once again was painfully obvious as I go for the Fire Punch, but. I get lucky, Tao gets lucky, and gets a burn on this Blastoise, which is gonna really help me take out this Blastoise faster and reduce the amount of damage I'm gonna take as I don't have any healing moves, so this is the amount of health that Tao is gonna be left at at this point. I'm gonna go for a Fire Punch again, as she's gonna roar me out, and I'm hoping she doesn't roar me to Victini, because I really need Victini as Switch Fodder, Death Fodder, and luckily, luckily she roars me out into Uixi. Now. What I'm gonna do is set up my rocks because I know if I set up my rocks up and Crobat or Frost has decided to switch in, they're probably gonna die from rocks. I'm hoping they're at that range. I think they are at the moment. Not really sure. As she predicts my um, stealth rocks and goes for the rapid spin. And I know she's gonna die from burn, so I might as well just keep on going for rocks and hope that she over predicts and does not go for rapid spin right now. So, gonna go for that rocks again. And luckily for me this time, she's just gonna set up the Toxic on me instead, which is actually bad too, but it, I'm glad she didn't go for Rapid Spin either way, because those rocks are really gonna help me. But having Poison on my wall is really bad. Um, at this point, I believe I'm just gonna Psychic this thing to death. Um, yeah, she barely lives with the burn, but yeah, I'm just gonna Psychic this thing and take this thing out. So, I believe she has a Crobat, Frostlast, and... The Porygon 2, and I just have this, my original 3 that I said earlier. But, um, it's looking like this is gonna be my loss pretty much. I just gotta get really lucky basically. So, she's gonna switch into Porygon 2, and I'm just gonna go for the T Wave just to paralyze it so I can go first all the time and, um, get some para hacks going. I just gotta basically get lucky. As she is gonna go for the Tri Attack, and this is gonna do. A pretty sizable amount of chunks since I'm more d defensive oriented than specially defensive oriented. Well, I'm fully defensive. But yeah, that's why I don't take it well. And right here, I'm not sure if I made the right move here. I go for Heal Belt. I think I should have went for um, something else earlier. I'm not sure. I think I should have went for Heal Belt the first turn, then Thunder Wave. Or should I? He I'm not really sure. Or should I? Point is, the Thunder Wave was really important. And. I'm just gonna get one second attack on him. I could have possibly gotten two if I played this right, but I might have played it right. I'm not really sure. But she is basically gonna take me out with another try attack. So I'm left with my choice Vex, Snorlax, and my Victini uh, that is Death Fire and Switch Fodder. 
So, and this Porygon 2 is really defensive with the Eevee Light and stuff. So I have to really, really get lucky to win this. But it's be it's gonna be a closer game than I thought it'd be. As she switches to the Crobat, and the rocks don't kill it. But luckily, I just body slam it, and sh that was the right move of her to, to switch to the Crobat, because I do have the choice specs on me, so she's gonna see what move I lock myself into, because if I locked myself into Body Slam, she can switch to this Frost Slash. And if I lock myself into Fire Punch, then she could switch into Porygon 2 easily and just basically walled me. So I made the right play of Body Slamming, and she made the right play of going to Crobat. But she switches into Frost Slash, I'm locked into Body Slam, I can't do anything, so I have to switch out to unlock myself out of Body Slam, and she just goes for a ton, I guess. She could have set up a third layer of spikes here, which probably could have changed the game. As, as you can tell, that's how much two layer spikes does. And she's gonna ice beam me here, and I'm gonna barely live due to the mute, the, the um, not the immunity, the thick fat ability. And I'm just gonna fire punch this thing in the face and take it out. So basically, I'm living with 10, and if she had that third layer of spikes, that would have been her game at this point. But she has one poke left, I have one poke left. She has a paralyzed Porygon 2 with Eevee Light, which is really defensive against my Snorak that's locked into Fire Punch, and if it gets hit, I it's gonna die and I'm gonna lose. So I gotta hope for crits and paralyzations here. And I get the crit and the paralyzation there, so that's very nice. So I gotta go for the fire punch again, because this is looking at 2 or 3 hit KO. And she gets parahax again. So I gotta hope this fire punch does max damage, or basically just takes it out. And that takes out the Porygon too, and that's gonna be a very narrow 1-0 victory for me. And, wow, the Snorlax of mine, Tao, actually did something. Which is probably going to be the only time it ever, ever does. But in all honesty, that should have been Friendly Skeleton's win. I just got really, really lucky that game. Um, bonus video! I said I would upload it last, like two days ago on my last video, but I was really busy and something went wrong with it when I tried to export it out of iMovie. So I'm going to have to edit it when I get the time and... Yeah, that'll be up sometime this week. Leak? Week? Week. I can't talk today. But, um, yeah. Like if you like, comment if you like, and subscribe if you like. And I'll see you guys later.